Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the water crisis in Colombia, a chemical and biological perspective. This is a presentation from the University of Cartagena in the city of Cartagena, um, Colombia. This is the uh, outline we will follow. Water connects uh, everything, mercury pollution in gold mining areas in Colombia, the city surrounded by water. I will talk about uh, Magdalena River and also something about drinking water quality. Um, the first part is just to remember that most of the time that we deal with water in research or even in our home, we never think about water connecting everything. This is um, absolutely amazing, but the idea with this talk is allow you to think a little bit more about that uh, fact. Okay, this is a typical gold mine in, in Colombia. I am pretty sure it is uh, very similar to gold mine mines in all over Latin America. And um, in these mines, what is uh, always the same is that families live with people that work in the mines. This mine is called Santa Cruz Mine. It's uh, one of the biggest mines in, in Colombia. There are around 6,000 people working together with their families in this area. Um, this is what is going on there. Basically, two or three bulldozers working 24 hours a day. And um, this is the kind of holes they do. As you can see, there are many people working there, but this is only to take what was left over on that side. So once uh, people remove the land and the soil, others, miners, get there to get what is uh, left over. And you can also watch that there are many children working in this business in Colombia. So all the material that is taken from those places is washed with water from nearby marshes and, and rivers. And um, in this place, as you can see here, the material is washed and a lot of mercury is deposited in this place and the gold is remove it from the soil. This means that mercury is directly incorporated into the water. Miners, they use work without any kind of protection and mercury is highly used in these places where um, the mineral is treated. In those places at the south of Bolivar, one state in Colombia with, uh, which has a lot of gold mining, you can see the high concentrations of mercury in the air. As you can see here, for instance, you can have up to 30,000 nanograms per cubic meter. That's a lot of mercury in, in the air. And of course, this uh, mercury gets moved from one place from one mine to all over the city, and people uh, basically is breathing mercury all the time. Mercury that gets into the water is uh, moved into the uh, nearby marshes, as this one. Um, this is a particular marsh because this is very uh, beautiful place, and we have taken uh, samples in different places of this uh, marsh. Um, this is the uh, Caribona River. This is one of the rivers with the, the largest concentration of gold mines in, in, Col in Colombia. Um, as you can see here, uh, water from different mines, they do have measurable, measurable uh, concentrations of mercury in the water. And that mercury gets accumulated into the sediments that move this material directly to the marshes or, or rivers. In some places, you can have even up to 300 uh, ppm of, of mercury in sediments, which is a very high concentration. 
that said that the mercury deposited in the sediments getting um, quite contact with water and mercury in the water is then taken up by the phytoplankton and the phytoplankton you know is the food of the uh, zooplankton so mercury moves from water to the sediment sediment to the water again as a methyl mercury after bacterial degradation and this methyl mercury is taken up by uh, plants and then by small animals and mercury gets moving from one place to another of the trophic chain as you can see here in this graph um, this shows different feces species and, and mercury concentration um, feces species increasing the trophic chain level as you can see here so the higher they are in the trophic chain level the greater the concentration of mercury and at the top of the chain transfer we the humans are so from all this information that we have gathered for several years in, in, in different gold mining areas in Colombia this is the picture that we can take that is basically very similar to what is presented in, in books are, uh, about uh, mercury pollution mercury gets uh, di directly from the mines into the water and then to the sediments and is taken out by the food ch chain and all the roads leads always to the same, to the humans. With the data on, on humans, we have created my, maps like this one, which is a, a, a map of uh, mercury levels in hair of humans in the state of Bolivar in Colombia. It's at the uh, north part of Colombia, as you can see here. The maximum amount or the maximum concentration of mercury we have seen in this place is around 5 ppm as an average, which we consider the, this was the maximum um, concentration that we had seen in Colombia uh, derived from uh, mercury exposure. However, um, last year we took a sample of, of people in the Amazon. Uh, these are uh, indigenous people. Um, as you can see from this graph, the average for indigenous people in uh, the Caqueta River that live uh, in the Amazon forest is around uh, 15, 17 ppms. That means more than uh, 15 times what is allowed for um, people to have in terms of mercury concentration. This is a huge problem because you might know that mercury um, attacks directly to a, uh, a sperma and then reproduction for this kind of communities is in real uh, danger. We will talk uh, about uh, a city that is uh, surrounded by water. This is the city of Cartagena, indeed uh, the most uh, beautiful city in, in our country. I hope you can visit Cartagena at any opportunity. He has a lot of uh, visitors, visitors from all over the world. Um, however, because it is a city surrounded by, by water, as you can see here, this is the city of Cartagena. So this is the Atlantic Ocean. This is a marsh right here. All the city moves around this wonderful uh, liquid. Um, but people who live there sometimes forget that and never take a moment to think about what is going on with things in the city, in particular in the water. We have uh, taken samples for uh, this uh, beard, uh, the snowy egret, and those samples were basically eggs. We, we took samples from uh, uh, egrets that live in Cartagena, and also for uh, herons that live far from the city in a special of a reference site. As you can see here, um, this uh, graph shows uh, egg length, uh, egg width, um, egg weight for um, eggs that were taken from uh, animals living in Cartagena, and this is from the reference site. As um, shown here, the eggs from uh, Cartagena Bay has uh, less length 
and also less uh, weight than those from a reference site. But what was really amazing is that uh, those uh, eggs from Cartagena Bay had almost three uh, times more mercury than the eggs taken from the reference sites. And this mercury comes from a chloralkali plant. This chloralkali plant was closed almost 40 years ago. So that means that even today, the mercury that was deposited there is affecting those um, animals. This is another uh, view from uh, for the city. Um, we call this place here the island of the birds because there are many birds, birds around here. You can see small boats here. These small boats are still uh, painted with a special chemical um, that they is called tributyl team. This tributyl team, even at very low concentrations in water, parts per trillion, which is very, very low concentration, they produce something that it is called imposex. Imposex um, is uh, something that happens in some uh, types of snails. As you can see here, the shell of the snail is completely damaged because of this endocrine disrupting chemical. And also female snails, they develop imposex, which is a small penis, as you can see here. So these are uh, problems that we have identified that are just next our home door in, in, in Cartagena. Um, not far from there, we are facing a, a problem with fish parasites. We are not quite sure what is going on, but in this fish species that is called uh, Muhil insilis, we have seen both uh, nematodes, as these ones, and also trematodes. This is a uh, um, liver tissue, as you can see here, those are small parasites. And in some of these specimens, we have found even 40,000 parasites per animal. So that's a lot of parasites. So we, we are not sure if this is due to uh, environmental pollution or maybe uh, global warming, but uh, it might be a, a combination of different things. Um, we have uh, recently um, solved the uh, genome of the fish and, and we are trying to uh, study a little bit more about what is uh, going on with this interaction between um, parasites and, and fish. Um, the most important river in Colombia is uh, the Magdalena River. Those are some pictures. Um, the Magdalena River uh, source is uh, at the south of the, of the country. This is uh, Colombia here. Um, as you can see here, the river uh, source is right here and the mouth is up here. And what we have done in Magdalena River is that we have collected uh, sediments for 20 different stations. And um, those uh, sediments, we measure different parameters, uh, particularly um, polycyclic aromatic uh, hydrocarbons and also different metals. As you can see here in this table, uh, metals, uh, for some of them, for instance, they don't change even from the source of the river. That means that at the very source of the river, it is, starts receiving uh, pollutants. Um, and also, we uh, perform some experiments with uh, this organism, uh, C. elegans, in which we uh, made extracts of those sediments with water and exposed this uh, organism um, to those extracts. As you can see here, for instance, for, for lethality, there are some special uh, places along Magdalena River where lethality uh, increases. The same with, with grow and also for locomotion. But with, what is interesting about locomotion is that when we go from the source to the mouth of the river, the locomotion of the or the movement of this um, nematode decreases. So this might tell us that uh, accumulation process um, of toxicity is, is going on. 
With C elegance, uh, you can do many things. Um, we have checked, for instance, um, the effects of metals, the production of reactive oxygen species, exposure to uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons or exposure to different xenobiotics. And then, uh, in order to check different uh, exposures or different signaling pathways in this organism, we have used um, C. elegans that were modified genetically. And then we expose those uh, strains, for instance, the strains that are positive for oxidative stress, uh, stress uh, genes or metallothioneins, which are uh, genes that respond to uh, metals uh, or cytochrome uh, P450 genes that respond to different um, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons uh, and so on. As you can see here, there are some special places where the um, expression, the gene expression increases. For instance, Barranca Bermeja. Barranca Bermeja is a place where we have a uh, oil refinery that produces both metals and um, polycyclic aromatic, uh, aromatic hydrocarbons. And you can see here, there was an increase for metallothionins and oxidative stress and also for uh, synobiotic metabolism. So with this organism, we can check basically different signaling pathways in terms of, of toxicity. Um, with all the data where we got it um, for this river, we could uh, establish that in some places, the nature of the pollution was quite uh, unique. For instance, Barranca Bermeja, Girardot, um, these two, uh, as I mentioned, Barranca Bermeja is related to um, um, oil refinery and Girardot is uh, related to uh, the income of waters from Bogota River, which is a, a very polluted river. So using this technique, it's possible to identify sources and, and impacts of pollution along um, different places. What I mentioned at the beginning, that water connects everything, it's uh, seen in this uh, figure that you are showing here, in which we have discovered that for fish that live in Mandalena River, there is a relationship between prevalence and abundance of parasites, in this case nematodes, that follows the same distribu distribution that we have seen for mercury, as you can see. So with an increase in the trophic level of the fish, there is an increase in mercury concentration and also in parasite. We are not sure yet if mercury is somehow depleting the immune system of the, of the fish to allow it to have more parasites, but something on, is going on there. Uh, finally, uh, a problem that we have, I guess, in, in many cities in Colombia is that we are not sure about what we drink. This is a report, for instance, for Aguas de Cartagena about the water quality in Cartagena, okay? So they define water quality in terms of uh, calcium, magnesium, iron, chlorine, sulfates, total coliforms, but nothing else. They keep saying this is one of the best waters in the whole country, but with this information, it's very difficult for the customers to know if exactly they are drinking something that is really okay. And this is really important for us because, as you know, we, in Cartagena, we live at the mouth of Magdalena River, and Magdalena River from its source receives water from all the cities, and then the pollution gets directly in our uh, water supply. So this is a call for these uh, companies to provide uh, the citizens with the information that we need to uh, specifically establish if the quality of the water we are drinking is, is really good from a toxicological point of view. Final remarks is that uh, these problems in, in, in Colombia are, are very similar uh, within the different rivers. These are just some examples that we have shown here, but um, there is no doubt that we are facing a crisis uh, 
of the water in, in Colombia, not only because of this huge deforestation in the Amazon, but also because water is more or less available, and we don't think about the consequences of polluting this water, what is going on uh, down there when other people receive and use it. I would like to uh, acknowledge all the graduate students that work in, in my group um, for their data, and also the University of Cartagena, uh, the PhD program in environmental toxicology, uh, called Ciencias, um, the US National Academy of Science, uh, IANAX, and, and UNESCO for allowing me to come to this meeting and present this information. Thanks very much.